I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So we were talking before, but I, I saw your, your tweet about uh, nightmares. And I have not been having nightmares in quarantine, but I have been having weirder um, dreams. And I had one this morning, which caused me to remember ones that I had forgotten. And okay. there, there's like, I guess, a recurring cast of people who don't actually exist anywhere outside of my head. Um, okay, yeah. So I had a weird dream last night. And in that dream, I learned that um, our housekeeper, we don't have a housekeeper, but we've a dream housekeeper. And my dream housekeeper, I learned that like she has a kid who's been secretly living underneath our bed for a very long period of time, but we just never noticed. Wait. So, can you say that one again? Living in your bed? Living under the bed. So oh, okay. The okay. housekeeper that only lives in my dreams, um, okay. who is very much like the housekeeper from either like Family Guy or American Dad or like one of those shows that are all done by the same guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Seth MacFarlane, I believe. Yeah, yeah, one of those Seth MacFarlane. Like, yeah. So her daughter has secretly been living underneath our bed and we never her, knew it. Her daughter? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Because yeah, I guess like... She can live like in the springs, on the on the the box spring underneath. So she's like, but then like can, like comes down every once in a while to like steal a glass of water. Hey Brandon. Yeah. I don't know if that's exactly a normal dream. It's not a nightmare. I agree to disagree. Because it wasn't scary. I just like oh you you know you never told us. Um, and then I keep accidentally breaking people's necks. Yeah. Yeah, but like little thing, like so it'd just be like if, like a normal, like conversation between people, and then like if I just like accidentally casually bump into somebody lightly, they 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 keep, and it's always the same person, but it's another person that's not a real person. They only live in my dreams. So like Neck the break, man. the li- the littlest like thing, whether it's accidental or not, will cause them to like fall over and like hit the like, but like hit the back of a chair on the way down, and then. So then this person, their neck keeps breaking all of the time, but they get better in the next dream. So that's that's pretty good. Or sometimes later on in the same dream, like I can like massage it back into place. Oh, you're making me think of Scary Movie. The or. scene where like the chairs all like are on the ground and like everyone keeps landing on their neck and hitting, hitting breaking their neck. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Oh, and then what else is there? Oh, oh God! It was Scary Movie Four. That was such a yeah. bad movie. Oh, then also my dr- the house in my dreams is is much smaller, and also my family lives v- v- just through the woods. I don't have woods, but in my dream we I have woods, and a housekeeper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have more woods than you. Whose daughter lives inside of our bed? Yeah. I mean, there's a throughway right immediately on the other side of it, but mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Oh, also, my bed in my dreams is really a, a it's a it's a twin. A twin. A twin. Yeah, in real life, it's a king, but it's a twin. In the dream. Did you used to have a twin? Like I did used to have a twin. Yeah. So that then maybe it's like a part of your. Maybe your... I don't know. I don't pretend that an analysis of dreams is actually beneficial or contributes to anything. Um. I, I think... can see having weird dreams would be a sign that something's going on, but I don't think the content itself necessarily holds any mystical information. I don't think it holds mystical information, but I do feel like your dreams are a way for your your brain to process things. Whether or not you can actually glean information out of your dreams is a different story. Yeah. Although I will say it's pretty... So I don't have REM, dream, REM sleep dreams, typically. Mm-hmm. Um... Which I think is different, because REM sleep is literally different than yeah. other forms of sleep. I dream in that twilight state, yeah. So it's less of it's less of my my a dream and more of a 
hey, your brain's working through some shit. So here's a mm-hmm. bunch of images that are about to terrify you. Oh, that's great. Like fish, you real- fish with human teeth? No, usually it's oh. more of I'm failing everyone around me. Oh. Uh, yeah. They're, they're, it's a lot more. It's a lot less fun and weird and more uh, clearly psychological. <laughs> oh, see, I, I don't think I've ever had like a psychological type of dream. I think mine are all, even my, the ones that are nightmares. They're even just like, you think the, the only nightmare that I actually recall is one where like, or it was actually scary in the dream and I woke up and I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Is like um like a horrifying, ver- like a, a just a very large squirrel trying to eat me. So I have to like keep running from spot to spot hi- to hide from this very large squirrel. But it was scary in the sense of like the alien video game. It's kind of scary. Like, like I- alien isolation? Yeah, like, it was like alien isolation. But instead of alien, it was a... A, a very, giant squirrel. A large squirrel, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's... Exactly the same. Exactly the yeah. same. <laughs> I will say this, though. Um, the Alien series is actually pretty cool. Because... The, the movie Alien, series or the game series? The movie series. The it game series is cool. Pretty, I hear the, the, the game series is pretty cool, too. I didn't play mm-hmm. Isolation. Um, but... Uh, the thing I like about Alien the most is the way that they treat the alien. So it's not like this this uh thinking clever creature it's literally just an animal yeah yeah and i i kind of love that about the series yeah where it's like literally just following its like autonomous it's 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 like need to survive yeah it's a primal need and that's yeah. just what it's doing so there's and- which is so much better than other ones where like they try to outclass you but this one there's no chance that you're the the hero character would be able to reason or outwit or outsmart the, the the alien because it that's not it does the reason why it's doing things is as a primal urge which means there's no way you can try to reason with it i honestly think that's scarier yeah i do too like like way scarier because there's like no way to work around this yeah. there's no compromise there's no it, it's it's something that exists in the the primal twilight the the primary primal uh dawn of human the human brain it hits that like lizard part of your brain yeah and so I, there I kinda... is no no reason or compassion or anything with it like that yeah part that would be there with the hyper intelligent hyper intelligent enemy kind of alien that's were just purely removed from from those creatures yeah i i, I think i prefer that because like yeah for me the predator series is not as impactful and I think part of it is because the predators are like, like white guys hunting in Africa. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's kind of the the fun twist about it. But the I would definitely prefer aliens over predator. But I do enjoy them both, Fair. um, independently of each other. And then when they do meet with the AVP uh, stuff, you know, like the alien and predator series are like so tightly intertwined. In terms oh, of like lore, yeah. it's really ridiculous. Like the comics, the comics for Predator are like super duper deep in alien lore, and the co- comics for uh, Predator are super duper deep in Predator lore. Because I found out about that when I was rewatch yeah. when I was watching the Alien series recently, initially, mm-hmm. and I was just like going to wiki pages and reading stuff. Mm-hmm. See, what I did was I watched Alien One, Aliens. Skipped all the other Alien movies. <laughs> uh, and then watched uh, Prometheus. Oh, there's to get to... I, Prometheus was fine. I liked it. I don't, it's I been love, a while, so I don't remember how much uh, I liked it. But I, I, dude, re- I recall enjoying it. I love Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Because like, Alien Covenant was good. Prometheus, I liked because the whole time I was like, that guy's... F-. Spoiler alert, the, the guy that you thought was an android the whole time was. Um Yeah. Well, they t- yeah. they pretty much tell you day the like, second one. Yeah, actually, that's another thing I really like about the Alien movies that I've seen. Because mm-hmm. I have never seen Alien Three or Alien Resurrection, and I prob- seen all of them. Is it really worth it? They're not all good, but they're all like you get to see I, cool monsters. I read the plot of of Alien Three and Alien Resurrection, and I'm not impressed. I don't know if there's a horror movie with a plot that would impress me. 
fair. I, I Prometheus is pretty good. For me, horror movies is a lot like porn. You don't watch it for the plot. So, have you seen Midsommar yet? No. You should see Midsommar. Have you seen Hereditary? I have not seen Hereditary, no. You Okay, you have to see both Hereditary and Midsommar. Actually, because Tucker and Dale I watch for the plot. That's fair. That's a very funny movie, though. Yes. That's less horror and more hilarity. Yes. Well, it's uh, like, they turned the genre on its head. Also, the new uh, Predator movie is very good. Is I it? Like I that. haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. It's pretty funny. It's got um, it stars Boyd Holbrook, who looks very different than when I knew him. Um, yeah, yeah. And then um, you know, it, it, it does the it blends the comedy and the monster bits together pretty well. I'll have to check it out. And, and um, the whole plot is like uh, Predator ship crashes and a piece of his armor goes away. So this military guy finds it and then like sends it to his house as a little kid starts playing with it. And now it becomes Predator trying to get this armor back and then military guy trying to protect his kid from Predator. Amazing. And there's some decent B storylines and there's there's lots of funny stuff in there too. Amazing. Oh, this is great. Wait, Hugh Jackman? Oh, Henry Jackman. I'm like, what? <laughs> what is what is Hugh Wolverine Jackson, doing? Hugh Jackson? In this? Um what was I gonna say? I don't know. Oh, uh Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Yes, very good movie. So on the DVD there's Which a second Yes, there's a second cut of the movie. Yes. Have you watched the second cut of the I movie? I have not watched the the second cut yet. I can. I should probably. Because it's called Tucker and Dale are oh, evil. You, okay. And it's told from the perspective of the the kids on the camping trip. So yeah. it's playing the it's playing the genre totally straight. Oh, to the T. Oh, that's totally good. straight. Whereas That's... the original movie is an inversion of the drama about how poor communication kills. Yes. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Because they're like, good guy. Yeah, just they're just misunderstood. It's the kind of movie where if you liked Black Sheep, then you'd like Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Which might still be on Netflix. I don't know if they took it off or, if, or, or not. But it, it, it might still be up there. I um, don't know. I found... I found... I think I originally found Tucker and Dale versus Evil on Netflix. Then I found a copy of it in. It looks like it's on Netflix. I don't. Know, I think I actually picked up a copy from like Fye when that was a thing. It's well, yeah. Now it's closed, but we still had an Fye until this year, Brandon. Yeah. Although I think mm-hmm. Albany still has an Fye too, but it's mostly Funko Pop now. So <laughs> that's probably what hurt Fye in the first place. It turned into mostly t-shirts and Funko Pop. Yeah. Also, t-shirts of dubious legality. Because they, they had a lot of, like, shirts where I'm like, this is clearly not something that if you go to, like, the the official website, that shirt's definitely not there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the official website of whatever content it was that they were putting up. Um, I think I'm going to try to give myself a bald fade later. That was out of nowhere. Yeah. Okay. Think we're think we're ready to start talking about a cryptid? Oh, we can try. Okay. Yeah. So welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. For example, Mayhouse Keeper's daughter. I'm Brandon. I'm John. I live under my bed. Ooh, spooky. Well, actually, no, Jiro lives under the bed. Yeah. So, full disclosure, this week's episode, I think word count, it came up a little short because I had a copy already written and ready, but it was more into, like, Canadian Native American folklore, and I wanted to try to find another, like, same, like, goofy vein. So, yeah. all, all, you'll, you'll figure out why, like, pretty quickly, I decided this will be the path to follow up. And then it, it, it turned out to be not as funny as I thought it would be. But it's still a really interesting story. Anyway, okay. today's creature looks like a like a little humanoid. Mm-hmm. Um, it was first seen around 1805. It lives in Michigan and is sporadically seen. Do you have any guesses? 
Uh, uh, Wisconsin cheese man in the wrong state. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Okay. No, it's it's the nine rouge. The what rouge? The nine rouge, which apparently is more famous than I thought it was, because there's parades and shit. Um, but oh, we, we'll wait, go wait a, a little second. Bit deeper. Yeah. Wait a second. I think I've heard of this before. Have you? I never heard of it. I think I've heard of this before. I don't remember it, but I think I've heard of it. It's okay. one of those things that I think I've seen. And then we're like, but... nope, not enough on this, and I kept going. <laughs> oh, never mind. I have no idea what this thing is. Oh, okay. All right, so let, let, let's try to have fun in the first part. So the Nine Rouge, which is uh, it's French for Red Dwarf, is a supposedly Mothman-like creature um, that either warns or causes uh, catastrophe. Um, it's it's unknown. Um, <laughs> on the 10th of March in 1701, a party was being held in St. Louis, Quebec, uh, and this party was in honor of Antoine de la Moth Cadillac. The last okay. name should sound a little bit familiar because he's the founder of Detroit. Yeah, because it's Detroit Rock City. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I picked this one because I, I did Motor a little City. bit of surface digging, and I was like, wait, there's an ominous, like, dwarf demon that haunted Cadillac, the founder of Detroit. Let's go in it. Like, that's... So yeah. I was like, okay, let's, let's explore this. Well, I mean, uh, every Cadillac comes with a haunted red dwarf. Yes. For free. True. That That's the thing that they don't advertise. They don't they, have security systems, Brandon. They don't have tires, actually. All catalogs, they, they're these little red demon dwarves that just Flintstone for the, the actual locomotion of the automobile. Uh, just just holding up the axle? Yeah, they just hold it and just the little legs go... They run like that. And this is the story of how that happened. Yes, exactly. Later in the night, a fortune teller came to the party, and she began reading the palms of the various guests, and they splendored over how well she was doing. And then eventually, she went up to Cadillac, and upon reading his palms, she told him how he was going to start a great city. Okay, I just... There's a few things I want to point out here. Yes. People don't give fortune tellers enough credit for being able to read... Uh, wealthy right white people because yeah they can read the palms but it's really easy to tell a wealthy white person what they want to hear oh yeah like really easy like mm. i feel like it's easier than most people oh that thing you want and can afford that's gonna happen in your future it's gonna happen to you yeah, yeah. it's like hmm this person has no nothing standing in between them and getting what they want Let's just say they can get anything they want. Yeah, let's roll the dice and say, uh, yeah, probably you're fine. <laughs> so that thing you're thinking about buying, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're you're a wealthy uh, you're a, a wealthy white man, Cadillac? Yeah. You're going to found a city. Don't worry. It's 1700s. Every astoundingly wealthy person founds a city at this point. Oh, right, also, they're never going to see her again. So you can say whatever the fuck it is that you want. If you oh, yeah, travel no. to a place and like, there's a shop they want to. Like, no, you can say whatever and uh, try to make a little extra scratch that way. Well, those disappearing shops, you know, the ones that show up and then they're they're gone after someone buys something from that. That's mm. real. That's not science fiction. That's just oh, yeah. somebody setting up a shop, selling a faulty product to someone and then getting out of Dodge. Well, there's also cool like pop ups because there'll be like restaurants that are around for like one day where they like show up. They open, but do some, like, really, really niche, like, food that's, like, pretty expensive and on tiny plates, and then they're gone. And then everyone gets diarrhea. But there's yeah. no one to sue. Can you sue over diarrhea? Uh, you can sue over negligent food poisoning. Diarrhea is not, not... Yeah, if it's food poisoning, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, when I say when I say diarrhea, I mean you got food, food poisoning. poisoning. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So having his chub thoroughly fluffed, Cadillac urged her to, con to continue. But unfortunately, or so the story goes, the future was dark. 
The fortune teller continued, saying that, In the years to come, your colony will be the scene of strife and bloodshed. The Indians will be treacherous. The hated English will struggle for its possession. But under a new flag, it will reach the height of prosperity, which you have never in your wildest dreams pictured. That's such a vague... That's such a vague prediction. Yeah. And in that time period... Okay, let's just let's just talk about this for a second. Oh, how the 1800s were great and nobody ever got sick for no reason. And well, this it was one's like like you would like a, a cat would rub your leg and you have to have your left arm amputated because it had yeah. like cat plague or whatever. Yeah. So she's saying that it would be a scene of strife and blood. She said, "Welcome to welcome to America." Oh yeah, true. <laughs> like you, you could still say that shit. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, you can. Yeah. You know, uh, in a dour note, first month that we didn't have any school shootings was the month that schools were closed. Oh. So, of course, there were no school shootings. I mean, were there any shootings at per, uh, personal residences? Yeah, I'm assuming. Because then, cause then you could now, because everybody's homeschooled, you could consider it that. Well, there's also there's also the, you know, I don't want to go down the the path of making oh, let, jokes let, about let, shooting. Let, let's not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so with such good sounding news, Cadillac, of course, pressed farther, questioning the dubious, uh, dubiously extant charlatan, asking about the future of his children. To which they responded, "Your future and theirs lie in your own hands." Beware undue ambition, it will mar all your plans. Appease the Nine Rouge, beware of offending him. Should you uh, be thus fortunate, not a vestige of your inheritance will be given to your heirs. So that, okay, that's okay, where yeah. this, this, uh, little, the, the Red Dwarf comes in. So, Nine Rouge is basically a fortune teller hedging their bets. Yeah, I suppose. Kind of. It's kind of a fortune teller hedging their bets. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, so so now, like, it's... If he's very fortunate, then he did a good job of listening to her. She was right. If misfortune falls upon him, then well, he's he the, did not appease the Nine Rouge. Therefore, it's his fault, and she was still right. Well, it's it's basically the, like, the, the god, uh, like, oh, you were... Everything good happens to you. Oh, you were a good Christian. Something bad happens to you. Oh, God's just trying testing you. Kinda, sorta, yeah. Yeah, it's it's always a it's always a like it's a uh uh yeah, you're gonna win. You're gonna be right regardless because you yeah. have an answer for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there she she yeah, there's wrong one. She she said um uh, uh that she, like a heads I win, tails you lose kind of fortune yeah. teller. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. I, I was going to say uh, the Sylvia Brown uh, style of fortune telling. Yeah. Although yeah. She, she told people that their loved ones were still alive and they were super dead. They, when they were not. Yeah. Yeah. And the opposite. Mm. <laughs> super great. Yeah. The, uh, so apparently Cadillac didn't think so much of the words of the fortune teller, thinking it just to be entertainment and laughing with his wife about the entire ordeal. I mean, I agree with him. I do too. And then four months later, after founding Detroit, Michigan, uh, which m means uh, the city of Straits, on July 24th, 1701, Cadillac and his wife, Marie Theresa, 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 Theresa I, I can't. There, there's accent marks over the E's, and I'm not French, so I don't know how to say it. But it's Marie Therese for how I'm going to read it. Um, I didn't know that French had accent marks going both ways. I guess. I didn't know either. Uh, which no one ever mentioned for some reason. I had to like, it, just go and look up his wife's name just so I could put it in here. Um, they were out on a walk when they overheard a conversation between two men. One said to the other... Um, Things cannot run very long thus. My wife saw a few days ago Le Petit Main Rouge, or the uh, the little red man. Um, and supposedly this startled Cadillac's wife, causing her to comment on it on their way back home. Um, and then, what? 
What? What? She just made a comment. They didn't say what she said, but apparently Marie Therese said uh, something like, oh, hey, remember, that sounds an awful lot like what the the fortune teller said. And then she was all like, ooh. And he's, he's probably uh, just like, ah, that's a knee slapper. What the fuck? So then on their way back home, a red grotesque dwarf with sharp fang-like teeth crossed their path. And Kalek kind of like beat it with his cane, screaming, get away from me, red imp. And the creature skipped good. off laughing. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Just to beat something with your cane. He beats it with a stick. <laughs> like, like it, it's not even something like a little bit kind of like what she said, the, the fortune teller. It's... It's got it's a, a red imp with fangs, and he just beats it with a stick. And this is five minutes after two guys like made a comment on it, and his wife uh, commented on it too. Do you think? Do you think that maybe someone was someone hired a uh, like a dwarf man, like a, a a somebody who has dwarfism? I said, "Hey, listen, we're gonna fuck with Cadillac." And the dwarf man was like, give me, uh, what, what is the French currency? Francs? No, that's German. French, French bucks. French bucks. French bucks. French doubloons. Le dollar. Give me some French doubloons yes. and I'll, I'll do it. I need 14 pounds of French bouillon. Yeah. Cause that would be amazing. Yes. I'm not going to lie. If. Mm. If I was in a situation like this, like that, where I could literally just be a boogeyman for rich people, mm. just to like, like other rich people pay me money to be a, a boogeyman to other rich people as a joke. I oh, do that in a heartbeat. Good. Yeah. That actually be a really fun job. Yeah. Because then you're just messing with rich people. It's only like a pretty good job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I just yeah. want to mess with rich people. Yes. You see, you 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 you're, you're proposing that the Nine Rouge is really the Ashton Kutcher of uh, Detroit. Yes, it is the Ashton Kutcher of Detroit. Okay, this is this is the um, this is the predecessor Punk? of Punked. Yes, that is what this is. Or uh, oh, what's that other one where they had the um, it was the girl with the the really dark black hair, and now it's Tracy Morgan, I think, where they'd play like horror jokes on people oh scare tactics yes yeah, scare tactics Sc- okay i will say this scare tactics was way better than punked scare tactics was way better than punked and also way got very like we'll look at it on netflix huh. they only have the new one not the old one and yeah. let's just say there's um i the, tried to watch it the prank quality went down there's a lot of uh it's mostly alien bad just bad alien stuff yeah, I, I remember the old days. Oh, I sound like an old man. It was so I, good. With the I remember girl. the yeah the the practical effects that they used in the old days of scare were tactics good. were phenomenal. What like, was, sorry. I don't remember what the name of the. She, oh, I, she, I see her, Shannon Doherty. Oh, this is funny. So if you type in scare tactics host, it says Shannon Doherty, and it's a picture of Tracy Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> wow so the first two seasons only lasted like two years it was Shannon Doherty then Stephen Baldwin and then Tracy Morgan for five years I don't years. remember Stephen Baldwin at all I remember Shannon Doherty definitely yeah and then I was like wait Tracy Morgan and uh yeah I don't remember Tracy Morgan hosting it but I like I mean I know he Toasted it because that's the one that they have on. Um, that's the one that they have on Netflix. Mm-hmm. But I didn't enjoy it as much. No, and they have a lot of scare tactics knockoffs too on uh, Netflix. Which I, I'm not gonna lie, I watched all of them, but uh, <laughs> yeah, and none of them were good. Actually, they had one that's pretty good where they had um. They put little, they had the, you know, the oversized teddy bears, and they put little people in them and like trap someone in a room basically with living teddy bears that they thought were haunted. Yeah, yeah. Th- that, that was a pretty good one because they were pretty relentless on that. 
But also the teddy bears would straight up murder people because they're like throwing people off balconies. So she has witnessed to like murders and like things moving on their own. Like it was, it got to the point where I thought like, can someone just end this for her? Like, like it, it went almost like, too oh, far. Oh, this, this hurts. This hurts. You know what? That actually reminds me of a Japanese uh, show. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this bit, but it's a man sitting in a room with a bunch of people who are in on the joke. Yeah. And he's not. And they fake getting shot by a sniper. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. So oh. um, there's like a really famous like image of a guy whose face is just like crunched up. And he's like, yeah. And it's from that. And all I can think like oh, when I was watching, I'm just that's like, that's from. So what um, happens if I just look in Japanese sniper joke? Prank. Prank would probably get you it prank oh um, wow yeah yeah it's the face that he makes is like pure terror and to be fair like i'd be terrified too this is the this is the the, mo- yeah. the money shot right there um oh like, wow okay you know what i'm watching while i wait for our our, our dialogue to render yeah so it I love prank shows, but there is a point where a prank show gets uncomfortable. Right. A prank should not have the... You should give you PTSD. Yes. Yeah. Once a, once a prank starts to give you PTSD, it's gone too far. It has. By definition, you have gone too far. And I'm not going to lie. Pretending that someone is getting sniped at is, by definition, way too far for a prank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It might it might be hilarious oh, yeah. to watch, but it's far too far. Yeah. Uh, so apparently beating the demon with a stick that you warned not to offend had some negative consequences. Whether it was due to the Red Dwarf or otherwise, after some troubled times with the local natives and the Jesuits and illegally trading alcohol and destabilizing a fort and some other things, in 1709... So- <laughs> I read that when I was reading that. I'm like, trouble times with the local natives, the Jesuits, illegally trading in alcohol. Yeah. So either this misfortune that's coming up was caused by the Red Dwarf or picking fights with the natives and the Jesuits and illegally trading alcohol and destabling someone else's fort. Like, maybe those I, were some of the the root causes or it was this demon imp. No, no. I think I think it was a demon imp. The demon imp makes more sense. You know, I think you're right. I didn't like you said demon imp makes more sense and then applied chapstick like it was a mic drop. And it was amazing. No, that's mic drop for John. Because yeah. I I die if I don't have chapstick literally yeah. all the time. Because I have a nervous tick where I lick my lips. Oh, that's true. Now I'm also applying chapstick because it's like um like a yawn or one chapstick person is puts a yawn. chapstick. Then everyone has to point out, or like mowing the lawn, apparently, because I'm mowing my lawn only because I heard two other houses are mowing their lawn today, and I don't want to be the one house out of the loop. So, yeah. Uh, um, uh, a 179 issuance from King Louis um, the 14th uh, said uh, Cadillac was praised for success in, ex- in establishing the forp, forp, in the establishing the fort, but the troops that held it were officially recalled back to Montreal. So is Cadillac, who is arrested there on the charges of extortion and abuse of power. <laughs> uh, his heirs never to see his inheritance. I mean... The reason that I think the Red Dwarf is actually responsible is it's because a white guy got uh, punished for something he did. You know... <laughs> you know, that that all of a sudden makes it seem a lot more feasible. <laughs> A rich white man was punished. Oh, that's you know, the, that, 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 that kind of like, that, 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 ooh. That's you, the real supernatural element of this story. That's a lot more, uh, um, yeah, wow. Well, uh, we'll, <laughs> see, we'll okay. <laughs> shit, Red Wharf, real. Oh, damn, okay, I'm going to start stashing my shit in jars in the backyard. Yeah, um, yep, yep, yep. Cadillac managed to outwit his detractors, however, and was instead named the governor of the territory of Louisiana in 1710. Okay, maybe less, maybe less <laughs> supernatural because <laughs> uh, you're punished. Now you're a governor. 
Yeah, yeah. You know what? You're punished. You're a governor now. Mm -hmm. This huge territory centered around what was now southeastern United States held little interest for Cadillac, and he dallied over two years before arriving near what is now uh, Mobile, Alabama in 1713. So he was given... He was put in charge of a huge portion of land, and it was so... He was just like, yeah, but I, I don't... I just don't want to. And it took him two years to even show up. His governorship over the area was less than noteworthy. He had managed to uh, interest a financier in the trade uh, possibilities of the area, but came into conflict with him and the officials uh, that were already in the area when he arrived. Um, Spanish settlements, hostive, uh, hostile Native Americans, which, gonna say... They, they probably had good reason to be hostile. I, I think so. I think so. I think, um, in my opinion, hostile Native Americans is very, very reductive towards them because <laughs> literally 100% of their grievances are worthwhile. Oh, yeah. No, we were, like, just some other guy decides he likes your house more, so he just shows up, and he's like, this is my house now. You're like, yeah, Wait. but you can't. And then he just, like, kills your children, and he's like, you're not allowed to complain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're, they're, they're still getting screwed. Yeah. Uh, and the oppressive tropical climate further added to Cadillac's dissatisfaction with his positioning. Um, so, I just, I want to... So I don't know where you read tropical tr climate for Mobile, mm. Alabama. I don't know. It was on one of the f 14 freaking links. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard the term tropical and mobile uttered in the same paragraph. I think hot and damp is what they were the 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 goal of calling it tropical was was it truly tropical? No, because tropical people like that. They go to the tropics on purpose. Yeah, I, I don't... We, let's let's see where the tropics are, because I forget which parallel the tropics... I don't know, but I can can say that um, when I was at the uh, Polynesian Resort for Dis the time we went to Disney, um, mm -hmm. very nice. Uh, so none of, Amer none of mainland America is in the tropics, by the way. Yeah, so I think they're trying to just call it hot and damp. Yeah, cause cause the tropic is the tropic of Cancer is the twenty third parallel, uh, twenty three degrees twenty seven minutes. What's our parallel? Forty second, oh, okay. I believe. Um, Ooh, I might have to start taking my allergy medicine. I just got the sniffles. Uh, bu 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 bu. yeah, we're the forty second parallel, almost okay. exactly. Uh, Ulster County is basically the 42nd mm. parallel. Gotcha. Well, yeah. Cadillac was finally recalled to France in 1716 after making many requests. And not long after uh, his son arrived in Paris uh, in September of 1717, they were incarcerated um, at the uh, Bastille prison. Bastille? 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 It's Bastille. It's Bastille. Okay. Oh, well, they were finally put in prison. Uh, and then... In 1763, Pontiac's Rebellion started, a uh, Native American response to the British policy that was put in place, and a response to the French and Indian War of 1754, and led by the Ottawa leader, Pontiac. Um, the British would make a surprise attack on Pontiac on July 31st, but not before sighting the Nine Rouge uh, near the Detroit River. This surprise attack would result in the deaths of 60 British troops, roughly 25% of the forces, uh, in what would become called the Battle of Bloody Run. So, I just had a realization, Brandon. Yes. Is Nine Rouge racist? Um, Because... I was thinking of like a red, like, empty man. I don't think that the caller in this uh, thing is is referring to, like, Native Americans. Okay, I'm just... Because even his depiction in the parades is like a red devil creature. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that it didn't start out as something worse. Yeah, I didn't see anything, we, we like, old-timey stuff, though. 
people still sing ring, kids still sing ring around the rosy brandon yeah i don't see anything that would imply that it... i just yeah, do I see... my 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 yeah. my uh people living in america being awful senses are tingling oh okay that's all i'm going to say okay. like I, that's that's this is just this is just setting off my hmm a lot of bad stuff happened in the 17 and 1800s and 1900s and aughts oh it moves up but it it moves so i think the only reason that right now it's um well we'll we'll, we'll, we'll go deeper because it's not all um like centrally based around the native americans <laughs> okay okay because it just happens to be now because that's the the period of time yeah, in in American history. Also, you mentioned uh, Bastille, and that instantly made me think of the song "Pompeii" by Bastille. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, let's. I see. haven't listened to this song in a while, but it's got Black Eyed Children or Black Eyed Humans, so uh, it kind of relates seen to that in a while. Let's like, see. No. Okay. Um. Not 40 years later, on June 11th, 1805, the Red Dwarf was spotted roaming the streets of Detroit. Uh, that day is remembered as the Great Fire of 1805, and there has yet to be an official cause to this mysterious fire. But as Detroit did not have a fire department, it would it, the city was leveled to the ground on the same day. Is this due to the Rooch, or more bed planning on the part of the field military leader and extortionist Antoine Cadillac? Uh, I mean, if you don't have a fire if, department, if you don't have a fire department and you're a and city, you're, you're a city that's presumably made mostly out of wood because this is the 1800s. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much brick production was happening in the Detroit area. I know a lot of brick production was happening in New York state. But that's only because I live in New York State, and I know that because I can see all the bricks. Um, it's basically asking for a fire that levels your whole city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he still all the dominoes were put in, put in place. Let's just let's just say uh, it's le this is less of this is one of those. Um, uh, Eric Andre, who shot uh, Pitbull moments. Yeah. <laughs> who shot him? <laughs> Meanwhile, the smoking gun is still in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I no. have no idea how this could happen. How could this happen? Um, on January 22nd, 1813, 112 years after the fortune telling of the Red Dwarf, General William Hull becomes the only officer in American history to be sentenced to death for incompetence. The really? General, the general claimed to have seen the Nine Rouge grinning and standing at him uh, the next morning um, uh, on the half of American... Or, oh, he, he saw the Red Dwarf and then half American forces were lost uh, on a surprise attack at Frenchtown. S Somehow that surprises me. Yet it doesn't surprise me yeah. that he is the only officer in American history to be sentenced to death for incompetence. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like I feel like there's a lot of people who should have been sentenced for incompetence. Yeah. But then again, he also also half of the forces in the half. town were dead. Half. Half. Half yeah. is a big number. Half is a big number. And I don't know, I should have looked up how many people that actually was, because in the other uh, thing that happened, 60 was a quarter of the forces. So so attacks, I'm I gonna... think, were on a smaller scale than we thought. Yeah, but still, 100 and, 120, let's say, let's say 100, it's still the same numbers, 120 yeah. is a lot of people. Oh, it and is, it is a lot not of only, people. And not only that, but 120 is in that part of our brain where we can kind of comprehend those numbers. Yeah. Because, like, if it's 1,000, we literally can't comprehend it. 100, mm -hmm. that's devastating to a human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really weird how the brain works. Oh, yeah. I think I can, it, like, picture into the thousands, but just because of, like, 
I deal with larger numbers on a regular basis. I'll be honest. I can, I can easily instinctively picture hundred. I can picture, but I have to. I think I think over two thousand. I think I, is where, like I can get one, two. I can sort of picture as a double, and then after that, it's just like a bunch, just lots. Yeah. After that, it just turns into lots. We can assign well, a number value, but I just picture it as lots. For me, I have to, I have to like enable an empathetic part of my mind for large numbers. Like it's, it's, it's not instinctive. Yeah, it's something that you've, I've had to train. So, mm-hmm. oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I just read ahead. Oh yeah. The, uh, yeah, isn't it great? Um, mm-hmm. The Nine Rouge was seen in the streets of mid July 1967. Following that is what became known as the 12th Street, Street Riot. Then Governor George Romney, father of the more currently known Mitt Romney, raided prominently black establishments, leaving 43 dead, over 1,000 wounded, and over 2,000 buildings destroyed, and over 7,000 arrests. A rebellion not on a scale. Uh, seen since the New York 1863 draft riots a hundred years prior. I bet you there's a, a very fun dollop on that. Oh, you know what? I bet there is, and if not, we can tweet at him. Yeah, because that sounds like a dollop. That, that That's something that's in their wheelhouse, definitely. Um, um, I know this is, this is... So that's awful. Yeah. And this is... What I'm about to say in no way is actually worse than this. Uh-huh. But for me, uh-huh. Mitt Romney's responsible to- for Toys R Us being gone. So <laughs> fuck Mitt Romney. <laughs> um, 12th Street Riot is still worse. I don't. I. I, I, I want to point out. I'm not. I'm not equating the two. Because I was gonna. When I saw Mitt Romney's name, I was going to make that joke. And then you've yeah. read about the 12th Street Riot, which <laughs> triggered memories of learning about that in uh-huh. my head. <laughs> and I felt guilty about making the Toys R Us joke. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I still need to make the Toys R Us joke because it's on brand. Yes. <laughs> um. uh, in 1976, two utility workers supposedly saw the nine... Uh, what followed was called the Great Ice Storm. Over 600,000 residents were without power in a storm never seen before or since. Um, as far as what the Nine Rouge could be, I doubt that such a long-lasting creature has been the harbor- has, as a harboring har- oh, 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 oh. harbinger. This word. Yeah. The oh, chair. Um, there's a there's a there's an expansion to talisman called the harbinger oh you know it's... in the original fable that was one of my favorite legendary weapons the harbinger was the... Mm-hmm. it was a sword in talisman it was the expansion before the last expansion because fantasy flight knew that they were no longer going to be having a license mm-hmm. oh, so okay. they made they made a it was before uh talisman cataclysm oh, okay that came out yeah. um and cataclysm's great because it's talisman set after the world has been destroyed by a cataclysm. Oh. I don't think we've ever played it. No, we haven't. I have the expansion, though. It's a, it's a totally different board. That's um, dope. That's a good... Yeah, we should do that in the future. Um, I, Brandon, I have every I have every Talisman expansion. We definitely haven't played every Talisman expansion. Yeah, all right. We, we've got to have a, a Talisman day. Uh, tal- yeah. So we can play We've one game. Set, of- set aside a full weekend so we can play one round. So we can play. Yeah, we can play one one. It, if you've never heard of Talisman, by the way, it's literally Nerd Monopoly. It, yeah, it's Nerd Monopoly. It, it's which it's, it, I still love that we played a game of Talisman that was went on for so long. And people were just like, "Can we just end it?" And then I, how you, I I read my cards all the time and definitely always notice combinations. Um, had won a while ago and just never realized it. Yeah, that was great. Uh, that was also the same game that one of our friends uh, was kicked out of the game because he died. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Can I read the rules?" He took the he took the rule book, oh, walked over rage, to a couch, read. rage read it, 
put the rule book down and then just covered his head because he had actually lost. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually really funny because uh, I believe, if my memory is correct, uh, we were playing with the city expansion. Yeah. yeah and yeah. there's a there's an event in the city called Wizard's Chess. Mm-hmm. And you can pull someone from any point on the board into the city. Now, what that means, for those of you who don't know, Talisman is about getting the, the crown of command. It's the MacGuffin of the game. You've got to move from right? the outside to the center of the board. Yes. And, and it can take hours. It can take hours. Legitimate hours. Um, our friend has just so happened to be on the crown of command. And I believe, Brandon, I believe you got Wizard's Chest and pulled him off the center of the board Yeah, when he was just about to win and killed him. And then uh, the game continued for about another hour. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. That was the day that it got banned from our one friend's house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a game that went for so long, people were like, let's just win. And it, I was like, I play to annoy. I play yep. to annoy. We were at the precipice of getting our lives back, and I ripped that out of everyone's hands. I was in, I was in support of it. I know because you're also a bad person. Oh, well, that's because I. Well, it's because I personally enjoy playing Talisman. Oh, I like, I love playing Talisman. Yeah, for me, for me, it just meant I got to play more of one of my favorite board games. It's, it's a total, it's totally Monopoly for nerds. Yeah, but I love it. Yeah, it, it it's, it's probably one of my like. There's no good reason for it to be my favorite board game, mm-hmm. other than the fact that it's basically D and D without having to have a TM. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Huge board too. Huge, huge. You, you like you need to have at least a full dining room table. Yes, and even then, it's well that that's to especially fit the if board you're... that that doesn't count. Like if you want, that's to fit the board, and then you'll need to find make room or spots or somehow figure out where to put like your cards. And all that well, other stuff. And that's not even including the expansions. Yeah. And I, I we play with all four corner expansions when we play. Yeah. Because there's no other hard. way to... We go hard. We go hard. <laughs> just like, we go hard. I love that we said that. Um, uh, as, as far as what the nine could be, I doubt that such a long-lasting creature... Ha- uh, as a harbing, harbinger with no physical evidence is whole cloth uh, creation. Detroit's Nine Rouge are thought to originate from the Algonquin crea- cre- creation myths, which concerned the Gloose Gap, who, after creating the Earth uh, and men, continued by forming beings such as fairies and dwarves. Um, these nature spirits were to act as a protector of certain regions of the country and to ensure that the Gloose Gap's evil brother the Malsum would uh, cause no harm to man. Uh, so in this telling... It, it's possibly like a weird like version or breakout of that. And I doubt it's... The, 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 I think the whole thing's kind of made up. Well, but... So in this telling, the, the glue scap is like... The good it's like the, like spirit. a good and bad creation spirits. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like it's like the difference between man. It's hard to to name exactly good spirits because people because spirit, spirits are always good and bad depending on which story you're you're telling. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah. So okay. So basically, the 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 Malsum are more like red caps than kind of. I didn't actually look a lot into what they were. Okay, fair enough. Because they like, yeah. So I, I didn't do a lot of research into the like Gloosecap and Mouse and all of, all this other stuff. I'm sure that we could probably get episodes on them. Um, I actually doubt point. that. I've tried really hard to do a lot of episodes on Algonquin Algon- War. Well, it have it's... to be more like one on lore in general, not necessarily yeah. a full episode on any one aspect. The main, um, I think, the main problem with doing episodes on Algonquin war- lore is it's more of a verbal history. Yeah, and it's a lot harder to do full episodes on it mm-hmm. because um, Native American lore 
is really interesting to listen to and really interesting to look into, but there's not a lot of gristle for the mill, so to speak, outside of reading the stories. Yeah. Because the stories themselves are the part that are really... That's the real, like... Like, in terms of... We're, we're basically talking in terms of... Uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not archaeologist. It's... Uh, uh, I'm know the word but it, it don't know what the word is it's escaping me i was literally yeah. just thinking about it's this. escaping several people anthropologists yeah cultural anthropology there we go um that's more of a study of anthropology than anything mm. and the the to me the thing that's most valuable about native american lore is the storytelling tradition yeah um because it's a means of conveying knowledge and uh wisdom through story mm-hmm. and it's a absolutely beautiful thing that i feel bad intruding on because mm-hmm. it's not something i have a right to like claim to in any way shape or form yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the reasons why the wendigo still hasn't been made into an episode is because mm-hmm. i'm trying really really hard to uh to do white glove right. that yeah yeah <laughs> uh so when European missionaries spread throughout Michigan, the tribal gods and supernatural creatures were turned into demons and evil spirits in an attempt to vanquish them from memory. So I think the the, the Red Dwarf is kind of like a version of that, maybe. And then okay, we yeah. have the uh, the March du Nine Rouge. It's a parade held every year, taking place on Cass Corridor in Detroit. Um, it happens every year around the spring equinox as a celebration uh, to bring good fortune in and there are floats and cosplay of the nine uh rude citizens holding up signs and festivities um my initial idea for this episode came from hearing about the founder of detroit and his little red adversary and a parade that goes on today still and i figured it'd be a light-hearted trip through american history but i guess i was wrong because he got a little deep with some sp- sporadic omen and misfortune um and then this parade i heard about it turns out started in 2010 not a 300-year-old standing tradition to appease this tiny devil where an effigy of the Rouge is destroyed um, as the organizers of the website would lead you to believe. Oh, jeez. So this is also... Also, this is after the economic collapse of Detroit in 2008 as well. Yeah. So that, like, makes this even sadder to yeah, me. De- Detroit, notoriously ha- with good fortune and clean water. Yeah. Um... There are no records that indicate the legend of the Nairunj existed uh, in the 1700s when Antoine de la Month Cadillac was in authority in, in authority in Detroit. The earliest record is Hamlin's Legends of Detroit, which wasn't published until 1883, 180 years after Cadillac was said to have been cursed by the Nine. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's that's promising for the authenticity of the story. Uh huh. Very promising. Yeah. So this was made up by uh, Hamlin. P- potentially, yeah. Potentially, that would completely made up. Yeah, yeah. Because like, uh, let's see, eighteen eighty three. Uh, that's the majority of claims about the Nine Rouge mm-hmm. were included in at, after this book was written. If that's the yes. first. If that's the first... recently after this book was written, and then fewer the farther out we get. So, if that's the the earliest record, yes, there's only two instances of the Nine Rouge appearing after that. Yes, every instance of the Nine Rouge is described in one book, and there is no there's no corroborating newspaper evidence no corroborating letter evidence there's nothing it's just in a book yeah it's in a book (sighs) (laughs) this is reminding me of our first episode brandon yeah (laughs) yeah 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 <laughs> Where you're like, wait, it was just made up. 
All right. Well, God damn it. I don't know why I'm like upset. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I'm kind of low key upset. Because I was hoping for it to be at least like a little bit more what have you, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's that's our episode. Uh-huh. <laughs> so if you enjoyed the podcast, you can check us out on CryptopediaCast.com, on Instagram at CryptopediaCast, on Twitter at CryptopediaCast. Our email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast. Uh, we have a Patreon. And thanks to this Patreon, we were able to start transcribing episodes. Um, yes. So recently... Uh, I think a week after this, so this is this is a week prior to this as original release. We released the first transcript for the first episode of Cryptopedia. Mm-hmm. Um, we were able to pay a license for um, a piece of software called the Script mm-hmm. that processes the words and then allows me to edit the the script so it actually is readable for somebody who wants to read the story. Um, we're going to be releasing these on a WordPress site. There will be a link in the show notes. I'm going to try to roughly release one episode a week going forward ish, uh, just because it takes a lot of time and, um, I'm working on additional projects, including new episodes of the, of the podcast. Eventually we'll get caught up to uh we'll try to get to parody with Mm -hmm. the the releases but it'll probably be a little while so bear with us but a special shout out to our patrons especially the jackalopes who get a shout out every week or every episode Mm -hmm. um thank you because you made this possible and you're allowing us to be more inclusive to individuals who do have uh hearing impairments so thanks. Yes. Um, so thank you, Clay Sinclair. Thank you, Marty Von Party. And thank you, Bert Schneider. Yes. It literally wouldn't be possible without you guys. Um, so yeah, it, it was 100% paid for by the patrons, this, this transcription service. Mm-hmm. So thanks, guys. Uh, I also am not going to be putting, I don't know if I'm going to be putting ads on the transcript sites just because i don't really think we need ads on there oh yeah um also next the uh the money that we get through our patreon is going to go for a bone transplant for bird schneider again very hollow bones very very high hollow bird bones very hollow very hollow very hollow very very hollow (laughs) um if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. If you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Uh, current outstanding list of requests include the one to go, as I mentioned before. Um, there's probably some Sasquatch out there that we haven't covered. There's definitely some Sasquatch out there that we haven't covered because I have like three research projects open on separate Sasquatch in- incidents. Um yeah, I don't think there's anything else off the top of my head. Ooh, I got a really fun one coming up oh, that I need to you? work on. Yeah, I need to it's find a fun one. I've got a fun one in that it's going to be going into alien green sites. Oh, nice. Which is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's my favorite and least favorite research subject. Yeah. Simultaneously, because my eyes hate me, but oh, it's just an infinite well of comedy. Oh, it is. He can also copy and paste the website into Word and change the color. That's not fun, though. That's, that's, that... Brandon, you need the psychological anguish of viewing the green text on a black background. Yeah, Otherwise, that's true. Otherwise, it's just not the and same. The, your room cannot be lit well, either. It's got to be a poorly lit room, green text, black background. And you got a background you gotta... that's got, like... One of those websites where, like, when you scroll the background... Is patterned so either the background moves or doesn't move with the text, and I, either way, it's always bad. 
It's always bad. It's always yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. That's that's the thing. It's like mm-hmm. free cities uh, or free sites or whatever the heck. Geocities. Yeah. There we go. Geocities, yes. Yeah, you got to get that Geocities energy going. Yes. Uh, although, yes, unfortunately, do. Geocities is dead. I had a Geocities. I didn't. I had a free website, but I didn't have a Geocities. No, we're big boys. We have real dot coms. Yeah, I pay I pay for a website that I maintain and write the code for, and it's totally, totally not out of date and riddled with security flaws. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put anything important on there, so who cares? Uh, um, yeah, that's that's all I got for the the yeah. show plugs. Uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon capital C capital B. Uh, on Instagram, I'm mu2057. On Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Weird.